Hi everyone, it's Jared Ping here for Digital Matter, and today I'm really excited to be taking you through our connectivity deep dive session, where we'll be looking at the application of LTE Cat1 BIS in IoT asset tracking, as well as touching on some of the new product range that we are bringing to market utilizing this technology. Right, so jumping in, uh, one of the most exciting parts of this is that we get to tease our new global product range, which we are bringing to market. Uh, this is kicking off with the Oyster 3 and Remora 3 Globals. Uh, effectively, this is a new connectivity option in our range of products uh, to focus on enabling global deployments. And these products would be offering Cat1 BIS with 2G fallback. Uh, now, there's two very key use cases that this product range uh, aims to tackle. Uh, the first one is that you've got assets traveling all over the world and you need to get them online wherever there's a cell network available. Uh, so that can be quite tricky when you are used to mature network regions versus you know, transitioning devices into maybe third world countries or more remote regions where connectivity options are more limited or not up to date. Uh, the second one is we have the major concern of 2G sunset. So there are a lot of regions specifically in South America, Asia and Africa where 2G is still the prevalent network, but it is being sunset over the next few years. And we want to make sure that we have a device that can get online in any of these regions, but also ensures that there's a future proofing capability built in. So the idea here is that if there's not yet Cat1 bus available, you can already leverage the 2G. Um, and if there is already Cat1 bus, it's there as a transitioning path so that when 2G is sunset, uh, Cat1 bus is readily available without an interruption to your device's connectivity. So one of the questions that is likely to jump to the front of your mind is what exactly is LTE Cat1 BIS? Well, let's take a step back and let's talk about LTE Cat1 first, uh, more commonly known as consumer LTE or just standard 4G. Um, this is technology that mobile phones have used for years. It's been rolled out over a very long period of time all over the globe and you can find it in almost every region. Um, Cat1 BIS effectively leverages this network infrastructure that is already in place through improved standards to allow accessibility into the IoT market, um, which is done through a single antenna design, which reduces the power consumption as well as the design size required for an IoT tracker. Uh, there are obviously pros and cons to this connectivity, uh, but we'll dig into that in a few moments. The focus point though is um, this is infrastructure that has been around a lot longer than LTM and MBIT, so it's more readily available to piggyback off, uh, which is the, the aim of Cat1 BIS. So for anyone familiar with our existing product range, uh, you would know that Cat1 BIS is a new connectivity option that we are beginning to offer. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is we see the need um, and the requirement for enabling global deployments to allow end-to-end -end visibility uh, in regions where there is no LTM or MBIT uh, and you need a future-proofed solution for your fleet's roaming capabilities. Um, so this applies generally when you're hopping between regions with LTM and MBIT into a region without it or when you're deploying uh, trackers in a region where there is no LTM or MBIT at all um, and you're only having 2G available or Cat1, um, depending on the maturity of the network in that region. The other thing we're looking to solve here is how to keep trackers future-proof. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be investing in a fleet that is only using 2G, um, as most regions are sunsetting, already have sunset technology. So you need a reliable transition plan, um, and that is what Cat1 BIS offers, so that if 2G is sunset, uh, you can transition forward effectively onto Cat1 BIS. Uh, the benefits here as well is you are leveraging a lot of maturity in the infrastructure. Obviously it's been rolled out for years, it's well proven, it works well, and your roaming is already um, really worked out well between all the network operators because there's already the use case of mobile phones switching between regions and needing roaming to work seamlessly. Uh, there's also been improvements in the actual components themselves that enable Cat1 BIS to be used. Uh, this means that we can get smaller form factor trackers as well as more power efficient designs 
to still allow you to deploy or utilize Cat1 BIS solutions on a battery power tracker. So something that's really important to understand is knowing when to pick which connectivity solution. Obviously, as more options are available to you, you may not always be completely clear on which is the best choice of action. And that honestly will always be, it depends. Uh, so understanding the pros and cons of the technology or connectivity comparisons um, is essential when you want to decide on what your fleet's connectivity should look like. So let's look at what those pros and cons might be between cat one bis and LTM and MBIT networks. Uh, so starting with the pros, uh, you again, as mentioned, you are leveraging a fairly mature network infrastructure that has been around longer than LTM and MBIT, is more robust in terms of coverage. Uh, you would see it generally offering improved connectivity outside the cities or more rural areas where LTM or MBIT hasn't quite caught up. Um, it does offer higher throughput. Uh, you won't always see benefit or requirement for this in a tracker that is perhaps only sending up you know, a heartbeat or a few bytes a day, uh, but perhaps it goes out of coverage or it's a heavy sensing application where you are generating a lot of data. Uh, you will see faster upload times as well as faster firmware download times. So that is certainly worth considering. Uh, it is also a lower latency. Again, technology is focusing on higher throughput, uh, which is effectively making sure that you can get all the data you need in a quicker time. Um, and it supports cell tower handover as compared to MBIT. Uh, effectively, this is just enabling you to have minimized transmission delays as you're moving at speed um, through different areas. So touching on the cons and things to consider when you're uh, deciding between these technologies is that the components can be more costly. Uh, Cat1 BIS modules do have quite a lot in them um, and they do require a decent amount of investment compared to some of the more budget-friendly LTM or MBIT modules. Um, they can struggle in poorer connectivity, in poorer uh, conditions. Uh, and the reason for that is they do have slightly less sensitivity compared to LTM and MBIT. It's not much. So it's really when you're just bordering on the brink of coverage. Um, and there is a higher power consumption. Again, Cat1 and Cat1 Biz, it is more focused around throughput. Um, so the cost of that is generally more power. Right, and so now considering your list of pros and cons, uh, it should be more apparent which connectivity is going to fit your application uh, based on the regions you are looking at. So obviously from our point of view, uh, LTM and MBIT is more power friendly. So if there is coverage, uh, this should always be your preferred solution and it will give you the longest battery life. So that is always something that we prioritize. Um, but where there's no connectivity or um, scenarios such as moving in and out of LTM and MBIT coverage, you know, Cat1 BIS with 2G fallback really becomes a key requirement rather than an option. Um, it's also a key enabler when you want to deploy fleets in regions where there is only 2G um, and Cat1 infrastructure is still being rolled out. Um, and furthermore, it also works in the region where 2G is being turned off. Um, so you have some regions where this has worked effectively over time. Um, there is Cat1 BIS available. Obviously your LTM MBIT devices wouldn't work there though. So this effectively allows you to use both Cat1 BIS and 2G, uh, depending on the rollout progress of the local network. So with Digital Manor now incorporating this new connectivity option into our product range, uh, we feel that we are really enabling the true global um, solution, uh, hence it's in the product name. Uh, but the focus and the goal here is to really just empower our partners to successfully attack um, new market segments or areas of operation that have, have historically been more challenging. Um, some of these include Asia, where you know, your LTM MBIT network rollout is moving along, but your roaming agreements are terrible or just non-existent. Um, other regions like Africa, where 2G is still very much used in some spaces um, and won't be sunset for a while, but it's not a very future-proof 
tracker or you lose coverage once you move back out of Africa. Um, and then you have areas like South America where there's a whole combination of connectivity, 2G, Cat1 bis, LTM, MBIT, um, and really hopping between borders uh, can be really challenging uh, depending on the connectivity of your tracker. Uh, the other focus point is the global applications. So this is supply chain visibility, logistics, um, effectively you know, having assets hop continent to continent without any concern that you wouldn't have an insight on where your tracker is or where your asset is. Um, so this is a very interesting opportunity and we think it's a, it's a great solution that obviously bearing the trade-offs, um, you know, we think that it's a, a very powerful connectivity option um, and having the cat one best with 2G fallback really just gives you the kind of best of both worlds in finding some network infrastructure in any almost any region that will get you online. So our closing advice is to always do your research. Um, it's important to figure out whether Cat1 Vest with 2G fallback will empower you to attack um, more challenging regions uh, or open up the opportunity for new and exciting uh, use cases or applications in your markets. Um, Really the goal is we want to sit down and engage and really help enable uh, your next truly global solution. Uh, but until next time, thank you for joining us and all the best.